Hello, Mark the Irish Football Fan TV. This is the match preview. It's Republic of Ireland versus Latvia in the Aviva Stadium, the first game of 2023. I'm joined by Adam Courtney. We're after just speaking with the under 21s here in Carlton House in Blanchardstown. Um, so, yeah, uh, I suppose going into this from an Irish point of view, this is a game that, although it might be an experimentation ahead of Monday, it's a game that we should be comfortably winning, in my opinion. Yeah, I think this game is obviously all building up to Monday, but I do feel like it's still a big game, you know? Like, if you go in and lose this game, all of a sudden it's more pressure for France. I do think Ireland will win this game um, as well, just based on the, the press conference as well, you know, um, that I was at this morning with Matt Doherty and Stephen Kenny, you know? They both seemed fairly upbeat and, you know, like... I think this squad is in a good place at the moment. There's a lot of you know exciting kind of players coming through, especially Evan Ferguson. Obviously, he's the player everyone's talking about. So, yeah, I do think it's it's an exciting game. You know, um, I'm sure the V will be packed as well. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow for sure. Yeah, I think one exciting key point is the fact he said today, um, and it's probably blown up by now that Evan Ferguson's going to start. Uh, and make his international debut. England's Evan Ferguson um, is going to start, and uh, I think that's exciting. I think that's exciting for young fans, and I suppose fans of all age. I was speaking with someone earlier on as well, Stella Maris, and he was saying like, I'd only go if I knew Ferguson was going to start, and then literally ten minutes later, Twee comes out, he's going to start. So you know, I think he'll put bums in seats because people just want to see an exciting Irish player doing well in the Premier League. Um, I'd imagine. Doherty will be captain tomorrow, um, having been at the press conference with Stephen Kenny, that's usually the procedure. Um, so if that is the case, fair play to him. And uh, yeah, but he needs to start getting minutes instead of these little minutes here and there. He needs to really establish himself um, in the starting team at Atletico to really kind of, for future qualifiers. Now he'll, he'll probably be nailed on against France um, just because of his name, not based on form. But I think um, it also, if that is the case, it also it would say, seem to me that Seamus Coleman has been rested for the bigger game on um, Monday. Yeah, well, we talked about this obviously in the Irish Abroad show the last few weeks about Coleman and about how he's kind of carrying that kind of niggle, you know. Um, yeah, it's a knee injury, I think, yeah. A knee injury, yeah. And obviously, he's been playing really well for everything, but do you really want to risk him in a game against Lafayette and a friendly when you've got, you know, one of the best teams in the world then a few days like definitely not so and then obviously we've talked millions of times about Mbappe or Coleman or whoever's going to be out on that left ring you want James Coleman in there you know he's our most senior player captain like biggest leader you, you want him to fit the game you don't want to be risking him and you know he goes down and then everyone's thinking oh what is he doing so definitely Coleman I'll be keeping him for for the game against France like regardless of I don't know how you'll fit Darty and Calm and I don't know how that's gonna work, but either way, you you definitely want two of them um involved in somewhat like Darty's kind of really lacking minutes at the moment, like twelve minutes for Letico since he joined on transfer deadline day, which is six seven weeks ago now. You know, it's not a lot of football, so I'd imagine Darty will get the full ninety minutes um tomorrow because he he definitely needs it um. But yeah, I do think he he did speak in the press conference as well about how Simeone's been as a manager, how he's kind of even though he's not played, he's actually still really enjoyed the experience of going there and the coaching and, you know, the way they kind of live over there. I think that's really interesting to hear because you'd assume, you know, not playing he goes unhappy, but he is actually enjoying it from what you're saying. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting with Coleman to see see how he plays um, against France, if he plays, hopefully. Yeah, I, th I think, look, I, th I think we play a strong side tomorrow. Uh, regardless, I think you'll probably see players like Evan Ferguson use sparingly 60 minutes, take him off. Even if he hasn't scored, it doesn't matter. But it'd be great to see him, you know, get his first goal, carry that momentum that he has at Brighton at the moment and carry that into the uh, France game. But, you know, we do also have to kind of realise that the, the two goals he got at the weekend, although it's a confidence boost, it was Grimsby and we don't need to be treating it as if it was Manchester United or City or, or Liverpool. And I know he's played against these teams and done well, but we also need to be level-headed about how we approach Evan Ferguson as fans, that if he doesn't do well against France, not to write him off straight away. I think that's a key, key thing. I don't think he'll be phased. 
but I just think as a as a fan base and, and, and notoriously Irish media as well has kind of been like that where you know they kind of hype players up to to a degree and then when they don't do that well on the finals or the, the biggest stage then they're criticised or they're you know they're, they're labelled not, not good enough or not as good as thought of um, like Troy Parrott kind of the way that went with him and Troy's only 21 like so I think it's key that we just take our time with, with Evan, enjoy him when he's doing well, but also if he's having a bad spell, just remember that he's young. Inconsistency it happens all the time with young players. So we, we need to look, if he doesn't score after the 60 minutes, but I'd be still taking him off after 60 minutes, keep him fresh. I'd be just saying the same thing about Michael Obafemi. If he starts 60 minutes, bring him off and have the two of them ready to go. But 60 minutes sharper going into the France game. Yeah, I think the same. Um, I think with Evan Ferguson, you know, you've seen so much hype in the last few weeks. I think, obviously, as Irish fans, you know, the minute he gets that goal against Arsenal on New Year's Eve, you're talking about him already. But I think it's only been the last kind of maybe month that you've seen the English media also start to really hype him up, like talking about, you know, links to Man United and stuff like that. And we talked about this before. You know, you want to see him staying at Brighton, doing his thing, and he is, he's obviously playing so well. Um, I think. Yeah, you, you kind of you don't want to give him too much hype that there's a massive amount of pressure, but you also don't want to not say anything, and you have to yeah. give him credit for what he's done. But I will say you got players like Gary Lineker, who was a, an unbelievable striker in his day, coming out and saying he hasn't got any weakness. The same thing with Danny Murphy. A lot of the English media are actually hyping him up. So we're <laughs> this time around, it's probably not so much an Irish case doing it, but then they're trying to claim him, um, which I don't. I think he kind of rubbished that in an interview without actually saying it. He basically said. I love playing for Ireland in, in one sense. So, yeah, look, I think just with Ferguson, yeah, let's get behind him. Hopefully he embraces the atmosphere. Um, watch Nick, he'll probably score a hat-trick against Latvia um, and everyone will be going Ferguson crazy. But I do think, look, is a chance for other players as well, like Will Smallbone to maybe come in and have a chance and, and kind of get to terms with the senior team and how they play because he hasn't he hasn't played a minute yet for the for the senior team he's done well at 21s he's done well at Stoke this season John O'Shea would have worked with him a lot as well because he's there at the club and now he's involved with the um, coaching setup so it, it would suggest to me that he's likely going to play as well um, so you want to see players that kind of like him I'd love to see Omar Vamadeli come back into the side and, and get some minutes as well he spoke about doing a foot race with uh, Kylian Mbappe that would be interesting too and maybe get some minutes for Nathan Collins as well because he's kind of struggled for game time lately so I think just sharpen a, a few players up just could sharpen a few players uh, and, and give them that kind of um, that proper preparation for, for the France game because you don't want players coming in rusty not sharp, their touch isn't great because they haven't been playing, they're rusty. You want them to be sharp, getting plenty of touches. And I think Lafayette is a good game to get plenty of touches because I think we will be doing a lot of defending against France. I mean, just look at the quality there. So uh, I was going to go on and talk about France there, but we'll do that on another day because yeah. um, it just came up a bit of Griezmann today. But we'll talk about that in a separate video because there's no point in talking about it. I don't know a whole lot about Lafayette and I be lying if I was to say I knew anything about them but I do feel like it's like a Lithuania where we should be going and beating them we did struggle against Lithuania but I think this time I actually think we'd be okay well I did a little bit of research they're ranked 133rd in the world uh, and Ireland last played them in a 3-0 friendly we won 3-0 in 2013 so that's about as much as far as my knowledge goes them. But their um, players don't stand out, you no, know. What no, no. I mean? Like I look through the squad that they've put in for this game, and there's there's no players that you'd know or even clubs you'd know. I'm saying that now. Probably someone will go score hat trick tomorrow. Maybe look stupid, but um, I think this is the perfect kind of match you want um for Ireland. I know we've had a kind of history over the last year and a bit of kind of struggling to break down these smaller teams that we should be kind of going and scoring two or three goals against. But I do think that this is the kind of game you want to have before France. You don't want to be playing a massive team and then. You know, you get beaten like three or four nil or something like that, and then you go into a game against France. I do feel like it, it is a good team to play, kind of get a bit of pass and go and kind of build the confidence in the players, um, especially some of the new ones coming in. Like I would like to see Smallbone get a run out. Um, obviously Fergus and Kenny has said it is starting, so you do want to see those players, you know, get a chance. And you don't want to see them put into a massive kind of pressure environment. It is going to be people coming out to watch, you know, Ireland playing against a weaker side before the, obviously the France game which is massive um, 
but yeah, I think last year we should we should definitely be in the body, you know, two or three goals. Yeah, I think it's going to be a case of you know if if we can get a good atmosphere going into the um, fans game, you know, there seems to be a divide obviously amongst the fans over the jersey and the the new gear. So I don't think that should really kind of matter. The results is what matters in my opinion, and I think that's what we should be focusing on. I think if we can get a good result, it carries that because uh, that again will be another focus point as though the new jersey against Lafayette. So. I think it's uh, I think it's key that we just literally focus on trying to get a good result, bringing a good vibe then into the France game, and then if we can get the Aviva behind the players and make it the fortress that we know it can be, there's a good chance that we there's a bit of a, um, a rumble in the French squad at the minute, so it could be key, a good time to capitalise on that. So I think it's key, just key to kind of get. A good result against the Lafians, but uh, I suppose just to finish it off, what would be your what's your score prediction? What's your what's your head saying? What's your heart saying? I think my head and heart are both going for an Ireland win, maybe two 0 I will take a two 0 hundred percent going into the next game. You know, um, you know, I'm not gonna go and say Ireland to win four or five 0 Like it doesn't really happen that often. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna stick with two 0 over yourself. Probably go three 0 I think Ferguson will get his first goal. And I'd like to see uh, Smallbone maybe getting the score sheet and Obafemi or someone like that. Um, Obafemi has a good kind of streak going on at the Aviva at the moment. So I'd like to maybe think he, he'll pop up with a goal against the Latvians. And he, although he's been playing sparingly at Burn, he's still popping up with goals. So I think <coughs> he could be a good choice for, for a goal scorer. But then you, you've got someone like John Egan who's been quite prolific recently. So um, look. I don't care who scores it, but uh, yeah. I have a feeling of it like a 3 0. I feel like we're going to put in a good performance, and yeah, a lot of our players are playing well at the minute. Um, so I feel like we should comfortably win yeah. and uh, not really have any doubts. Yeah, one thing I would say as well is it's just nice to see the last kind of few months there's a real buzz back in Irish football that I feel like hasn't been there in a long time, you know. Like you're starting Probably to see players it. playing at Premier League level and scoring yeah. regularly. Yeah, I think Evan Ferguson plays a massive part in that. Like just to see a young Irish player playing at that level, scoring goals, that's like everything a fan could want, you know. But I do feel like just in general, like even with the twenty ones having such a good qualifying um campaign, obviously they missed out in the end, which is unlucky, but they did so well. Obviously then you've got the women qualifying for the World Cup. That's massive. And then the men's team now you're starting to see Zunu, Collins, Ferguson and so many more young players playing at top levels and I think it's just really great to see and there's a kind of excitement around Ireland now rather than you know in periods before where it was kind of oh you know Ireland are playing or you know it's not wasn't that kind of hype where there's, I feel like there's a real buzz now around Ireland and I'm excited to see where it goes and you know hopefully we're going into a new kind of era new dawn of Irish football. Yeah well hopefully you know we're, this is the first game of the new year as well so obviously we want to Try and kick it off with a bang. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think we're going to win? What score? What do you think of the New Jersey? How good do you think Evan Ferguson is? There's lots of stuff we spoke about there. Um, just Seamus Coleman start against France. So a lot of things there to talk about. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching.